Welcome to a very special episode of Marginal Way. For four weeks, we've been tidying up the inn, making room, so that tonight we might swing wide the doors, that we might house holiness. Tonight we will hear the familiar story. Let us hear it with new ears. Let us listen from the margins. Each week of Advent, we have needed a candle to light. Tonight is no different. Bring a candle because you need to bring the light. We all need light to find our way from the inn to the margins on the marginal way. We are an open and affirming church, faithfully using who we are and what we have to serve those on the margins of our community. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. All through the season of Advent, as we prepared for Christmas, we've been exploring how we as a church can make more room in the inn becoming more hospitable to the needs of our community. On this Christmas Eve, we declare that the inn is open for the business of compassion with room enough for all. Our Advent journey has led us to this moment when the light shining through the closed doors of life becomes an open door to new possibilities, new relationships, What a poignant moment for us this year as the light, the hope, peace, joy, and love multiplies from one illuminated heart and hand to another. Tonight, we offer the lights of hope, peace, joy, and love to illumine the door of welcome. And we add the brightest light of all, the light of the newborn Jesus. It shines bright like the star that rose over Bethlehem. May this light also shine in our hearts, in our lives, and in our congregation. May this light awaken us to possibilities and lead us to greater hospitality. There is room in this inn, a house for the holy. Make of my heart a stable, a house for the holy, a warm and sturdy place for Christ to live and grow. In this moment, we open the doors of our hearts to honesty before God about what we've done and left undone that created less light in a hurting world. Let us breathe out this regret 
and breathe in the life-giving, forgiving Spirit of God. And out again with the peace of Christ. Make of my life a stable, a house for the holy, a warm and sturdy place for Christ to live and grow. In this moment, we open the doors of our lives to the call of the Spirit, inviting us to become more than we can ask or imagine. Let us breathe out our fear and breathe in the courage of the Spirit of God. And out again with the peace of Christ. Make of our church a stable, a house for the holy, a warm and sturdy place for Christ to live and grow. In this moment, we open the doors of this church, filling it with the compassion of Christ for all those who are struggling, we remember and pray for those who are suffering economic hardship and insecurity and basic needs. May abundance be shared. For those who are suffering mentally, finding it difficult to cope, may paths open and hope return. For those who are suffering illness or injury, may healing abound. For those who are suffering loneliness and isolation, may companionship and solace arrive. For those who are suffering discrimination, fear, and violence, may they know respect, respite, and safety. May the advent of compassion be born in us, reside within us, move outward from us to meet the needs of the world, making a house for the holy that is each and every child of God. In those days, Caesar Augustus published a decree ordering a census of the whole Roman world this first census took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All the people were instructed to go back to the towns of their birth to register. And so Joseph went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to the city of David, Bethlehem, in Judea, because Joseph was of the house and lineage of David. He went to register with Mary, his espoused wife, who was pregnant. While they were there, the time came for her delivery. She gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She put him in a simple cloth wrapped like a receiving blanket and laid him in a feeding trough for cattle because there was no room for them at the inn. This is how the birth of Jesus came about. When Jesus' mother, Mary, was engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, an upright person, unwilling to disgrace her, decided to divorce her quietly. This was Joseph's intention when suddenly, the angel of God appeared in a dream and said, Joseph, 
heir to the house of David. Don't be afraid to wed Mary. It is by the Holy Spirit that she has conceived this child. She is to have a son, and you are to name him Jesus. Salvation. Because he will save the people from their sins. All this happened to fulfill what God had said through the prophet. The virgin will be with child and give birth, and the child will be named Emmanuel, a name that means God is with us. When Joseph awoke, he did as the angel of God had directed, and they went ahead with the marriage. He did not have intercourse with her until she had given birth. She had a son, and they named him Jesus. There were shepherds in the area living in the fields and keeping night watch by turns over their flock. The angel of God appeared to them and the glory of God shone around them and they were very much afraid. The angel said to them, you have nothing to fear. I come to proclaim good news to you, news of a great joy to be shared by the whole people. Today in David's city, a savior, the Messiah, has been born to you. Let this be a sign to you. You'll find an infant wrapped in a simple cloth, lying in a manger. Suddenly, there was a multitude of the heavenly host with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in high heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom God's favor rests. When the angels had returned to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go straight to Bethlehem and see this event that God has made known to us. They hurried and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. Once they saw this, they reported what they had been told concerning the child. All who heard about it were astonished at the report given by the shepherds. Mary treasured all these things and reflected on them in her heart. The shepherds went away glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, just as they had been told. After Jesus' birth, which happened in Bethlehem of Judea during the reign of Herod, astrologers from the east arrived in Jerusalem and asked, Where is the newborn ruler of the Jews? We observed his star at its rising and have come to pay homage. At this news, Herod became greatly disturbed, as did all of Jerusalem. Summoning all the chief priests and religious scholars of the people, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem of Judea, they informed him. Here is what the prophet has written. And you, Bethlehem, land of Judah, are by no means least among the leaders of Judah, since from you will come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Herod called the astrologers aside and found out from them the exact time of the star's appearance. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, after having instructed them, go and get detailed information about the child. 
when you have found him, report back to me, so that I may go and offer homage too. After their audience with the ruler, they set out. The star which they had observed at its rising went ahead of them until it came to a standstill over the place where the child lay. They were overjoyed at seeing the star and upon entering the house found the child with Mary, his mother. They prostrated themselves and paid homage. Then they opened their coffers and presented the child with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. They were warned in a dream not to return to Herod, so they went back to their own country by another route. friends. Well, it's Christmas Eve. We've made it through Advent. We've waited for Jesus. And now it's time. Let's start by saying our little poem. Here we go. Make room for family. Make room for friends. We make room for Jesus. Make room for love that never ends. We make room for Jesus. Make room for others who need a hand. We make room for Jesus. Make room to listen, to understand. We make room for Jesus. And that's what we've spent Advent doing, right? We've used our box to help us think about all the themes of Advent. And now it's Christmas Eve. Christmas Eve is a beautiful night. Sometimes we light candles. We think about the light of the world coming. And um, I wanted to think about what else we could do with our box. We've made it into many things, a table, a drum. I'm wondering what else, oh, even a cradle, that's right. I wonder what else we could do with our box. I could, I could sit in it and pretend it's a race car. That'd be kind of cool, but it doesn't feel very appropriate for Christmas. I don't know. I mean, I could, I could make it into a fort, I suppose, but I don't know. I'm, I'm really thinking about the Christmas story and I'm remembering that Mary and Joseph were having their baby and they needed a place to be. So they went to an inn, which is just a word for a hotel, right? And they knocked on the door. Everybody, you can make your boxes so they have doors. Can you do that? Yeah, and then we can knock on the door. That's what they did. And they waited and they waited and no one came to the door. The inn was full. There, was, there were no rooms left. So do you remember where they ended up going? That's right. That's right, they ended up in the stable, which is another word for a barn, um, behind the inn. And there, they found the doors wide open, welcoming them. Yeah, and that's what we can do for other people. We can open the doors of our hearts wide open to welcome people, offer them a safe place to be. Just like the stable was a safe place for Mary and Joseph to have Jesus. Isn't that a wonderful thought? Our hearts can be wide open like doors on this beautiful Christmas Eve. I was thinking also on this Christmas Eve of how we could be welcoming to others, how we could help others. And we're about to probably get some new toys, aren't we? And maybe a way to make room for those new toys would be to clear out some toys that we haven't played with in a while, that we don't really need or use anymore, and give them to someone else who maybe doesn't have as much as we do and would maybe really enjoy those toys. So your homework for, I mean, it doesn't have to be tonight, but over the next week or so, your homework is to maybe think about some toys that you could ask your parents if you could box up or bag up and bring to the church, and we could find a place for them to go, someone that could really use them and appreciate them. That's a wonderful way to show love to others. All right, have a wonderful Christmas, everybody. Bye-bye. The birds, they sing. At the break of day, they start again. I heard them say, Don't dwell 
on what has passed away or what is yet to be the wars they will be fought again the holy dove will be caught again but and sold and bought again the dove is never free the people walking in darkness are seeing a brilliant light upon those who dwell in a land of deep shadows light is shining god you have made the nation greater you have brought them abundant joy they celebrate in your presence as with the harvest celebrations or as warriors celebrate when dividing spoils for the yoke that burdened them the weight on their shoulders the rod of their oppressors you have shattered it as you did at the defeat of midian for every boot that trampled in battle every cloak that was dragged through blood is now used as fuel for the fire for a child is born to us an heir is given us upon whose shoulders dominion will rest this one shall be called wonderful counselor the strength of god eternal protector champion of peace this dominion and this peace will grow without end with david's throne and realm sustained with justice and fairness now and forever the zeal of yahweh omnipotent will accomplish it ring the bells that still can ring forget your perfect offering there is a crack a crack in everything that's how the light gets in We seek hope in believing that it is always darkest just before the dawn. But that is just not the case. Just before sunrise is often the coldest part of the day. But light begins to creep in before the sun crests the horizon. In the spring, this triggers birdsong. It is the cue for the dawn chorus, which crescendos while it is still not quite light. The rising temperature heats the air, causing a stir. So the coldest parts of many days is also the windiest. We are tempted to dwell on that suffering. That's our nature. We are a people who have walked in darkness, and this peak of light at the crack of dawn seems rather less than brilliant. Every muddy boot and blood-soaked uniform of every battle, both literal and figurative, is fuel for the fire that brings us warmth and light in this vigil, awaiting a new day to dawn. The pain of labor is far from pleasant, but well worth the joy of birth. So we wait, and we watch, and we listen. Even in the deep, dark and cold we strain to catch the first notes of song in the words of rabindranath tagore faith is the bird that feels the light when the dawn is still dark isaiah sang in the dark mary sang in the dark tonight we are invited to join them and the angel choirs. So forget your perfect offering and ring the bells that still can ring. We asked for signs 
and signs were sent the birth betrayed the marriage spent the widowhood of every government signs for all to see can run no more with a lawless crowd or the killers in high places say their prayers out loud but they sum it up a thundercloud and they're going to hear from me in the beginning there was the Word. The Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. The Word was present to God from the beginning. Through the Word, all things came into being, and apart from the Word, nothing came into being that has come into being. In the Word was life, and that life was humanity's light. A light that shines in the darkness. A light that the darkness has never overtaken. Then came one named John, sent as an envoy from God, who came as a witness to testify about the light, so that through his testimony everyone might believe. He himself was not the light. He only came to testify about the light, the true light, that illumines all humankind. The Word was coming into the world, was in the world. And though the world was made through the Word, the world didn't recognize it. Though the Word came to its own realm, the Word's own people didn't accept it. Ring the bells that still can ring Forget your perfect offering There is a crack, a crack in everything That's how the light gets in None of us is the light, yet all of us are the light. What good is it to you or me or to the world if Mary gave birth to the light two millennia ago, but we don't bear it tonight into our darkness? And what good is a distant light if we can't see where to place a foot for the next step? God's word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. But only if the word is on our lips and in our hearts. The light that was in the beginning, creating all that we experience and all that we can know, is now not only distant, but also near. The great light that shines on us who have been walking in the darkness comes not from afar, but from within. We have been preparing the inn to house the holy. We have hoped defiantly. We have waged peace. We have rejoiced recklessly. We have loved powerfully. We have left the light on. And tonight, the dear Christ enters in. So forget your perfect offering and ring the bells that still can ring. You can add up the parts, but you won't have the sum. You'll strike up the march. There is no drum. Every heart. To love will come, but 
but like a refugee. Yet any who did accept the word, who believed in that name, were empowered to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor urge of flesh, nor human will, but born of God. And the word became flesh and stayed for a little while among us. We saw the word's glory, the favor and position a parent gives an only child filled with grace, filled with truth. Ring the bells that still can ring Forget your perfect offering There is a crack, a crack in everything That's how the light gets in that still can ring forget your perfect offering there is a crack a crack in everything that's how the light gets in that's how the light gets in That's how the light gets in. The inn is now open for business. The long awaited Messiah has been born, and on him the light shines. We have only to open the doors of our lives and say, welcome. Our Advent journey has led us to this moment when the crack of light shining through a closed door becomes one opened to new possibilities, new relationships. As we swing open the doors of our heart to welcome the light of the world, we invite radical change and potentially total transformation. Light is not meant to be contained. It will burst forth from any crack in whatever container it is in. Light is powerful. Light is wild. Even a sliver of light defeats darkness completely. Darkness always loses to light. You have invited the light in. You are a house for the holy. That wild, untamed light will not stay contained. There will be cracks. There are cracks. And that is how the light gets out. So forget your perfect offering and ring the bells that still can ring. Friends, this is the moment, that moment we've been waiting for. Light your candle now. Know that while we are separated by distance, we are not separated in spirit. And we pass the light to one another because we share the same light. Spirit connects us. Spirit binds us. Spirit also moves us. The spirit cannot be contained. The light cannot be contained. So move your candle to a window or perhaps take it outside, knowing that the spirit leads you into places where you may not go on your own. So move out from the inn. We who house the holy contain the light of the world. We 
who house the holy are the light of the world. So let us go out. We have darkness to defeat. Merry Christmas.